Hello there. I just wanted to show you what I was up to. The uh, unit, I made this part and I kept it on the, uh, the base. And the reason I did that was so I'd have something for it to sit on because if I cut it, then it would just be flopping around all over the place and this way, it, you know, you can see that I made it on a five axis vise. But, uh, I mean, I can part it off any time. But I choose not to right now. But the unit worked out good. I was surprised. And, uh, like I said before, is that I wanted to run the unit before I perfected any one system or or series of systems to make sure that the unit worked. So now that the unit worked surprisingly well, I'm going to go back and uh, revisit some of these items that I think need addressing. Or if you like to use the term like Jan does uh, circle back. <clears throat> so one of the these are very minor things, but they're going to make better improvements. So one of, one of the items that was really easy to modify and improve upon was this bracket I made. That was for this pulley. This is the the one that comes off the motor. Then this goes into the drive belt. Well, actually, it's the other way around. This one comes off the motor, and this one, the drive belt on here. That goes to the system that moves it like that. But um, when I put this uh, piece in here, it didn't dawn on me at the time because I, I set this up and I put a straight edge on here and I put a straight edge on here and I epoxied it. And, you know, I have no fixtures for this. It's, you know, you got to use what you got. So like I said, I uh, I put a straight edge on it, put a straight edge on here, and I got it good. And uh, so anyway, now I, I, I'm i going back and I'm thinking about it, and I said, well, I need to true that up to this surface. So what I did was I set this up. I just set it flat. I took a, indicated it, and then I just took an end mill and just, skimmed it till it cleaned up and it was there was a little bit of an angle in there it wasn't much and uh i mean it touched on one side then it, it i took a little bit and it touched on the other side then i just you know i indicated this so i took the ml went in there and it just came straight this way just a straight two axis move Cleaned up both those surfaces, and it was uh, it was close, but uh, now it's a lot closer. You know, now I'm trying to get it, you know, a little bit better. So that was an easy fix. And I think the biggest problem I was having was the um, the pulley system on this. There's these little rollers that go on the bottom. They go. They were like that. There's this one roller that goes here and this other roller that went there and the belt that came along here and ran up in, around that and came back down. And this was the system I had before. So I thought, well, you know, I could put some bearings in there and make that a lot better. So when I had this, I had this in here earlier. And when I put these uh, 
the screw holes in here, you know, they were fairly snug. And what I found out was I was, when I took this apart and I was playing with it. Now the, the hole that goes through this pulley, it's just a hole. Then there's an undercut for the head of this flathead screw. So it's flush. Here. Because those, you know, it has to be flush for those, uh, when these fit together, you know, it's got to be flush to fit in there. So I undercut that screw. And I was sitting here playing with this thing. And you can see that the you put a little force on it and the screw will actually start to rotate a little bit. See it rotating there? And uh, I think that's what happened with that motor driver is that when this was rotating, the screw came down and it locked up because if you tighten that tight and, you know, you tighten that tight, it'll lock that pulley. So it's putting a lot of extra strain on that belt because it was, it wasn't rollering around it. It was just kind of like pushing around it because this wasn't, this wasn't moving, it was fixed. And I needed that I needed that to be like a little bearing. So I think that's what happened to that motor driver. It must have uh, you know caused it to uh, exceed some voltage or something, and that's probably what happened to it. But anyway, that's uh that's one of the areas I wanted to, to address here. I know it's hard to see because it's black on black, but that's, it's just a little pulley with, uh, with a hole in it. And, you know, I didn't go through any uh, extraordinary measures to, when I first put this together, because I was just, like I said, just wanted to see if it worked. But, um, so what I'm doing now is I'm putting some bearings in there. I got these uh, these bearings here, and I'm installing them here and over here. So you have one on both sides, and I made a a little. Uh, little thing for this bearing to ride in and then it's got the same undercut in it but the difference here is that the bearing the inner race of the bearing will ride on this piece and when this gets tightened down this will be stationary and the bearing will still roll because the inner diameter is hitting on that that inner piece and the outer diameter is going to roll that belt around so that's uh i'm putting like i said a bearing here and a bearing there instead of this round piece i had which is going to help out and i'm also uh putting a mount bearing mount on top here too. I have this I had this like this before and then uh, this unit mounts in here this is the adjustment for that belt and before I had a I had a roller here in this hole and I had another roller here in this hole 
Actually, it was this roller. I'm just using this. It's a, it's the same thing. Well, it's not the same, but the same principle. But um, if you want to get technical, it's that one. But anyway, they were fixed. I couldn't adjust them. These I can adjust because they're slotted. I can move them back and forth and adjust them. All four of these. But these I couldn't adjust. And the, it's not so much the adjustment. The problem I was having was that the belt that goes on here is this uh, tooth belt. This one here. And the adjustment on that was a little bit, uh, I needed a little bit smaller. And I tried to get another belt, and I'd have to go five teeth smaller because it, oh no, it was, I think it was ten teeth smaller because they didn't stock them or they're out of stock or something. But I couldn't get it. And originally this was made to adjust here back and forth. But when you got this pulley down here on the bottom, you can adjust it. But when you put this pulley on top, you can't get to those adjustment screws right there. So you can't adjust it. So I had to figure out another way of adjusting it. And besides that, the belt, I couldn't get it, I couldn't get it smaller. So I had to find a way to make it smaller without using a smaller belt and without using the adjustment here. So since these were fixed before, I thought the easiest thing is to take these and have these adjustable so I can move them in on both sides and that would make the belt smaller and give me a better adjustment for it so I came up with this uh, this little thing right here now these uh, this was one long piece and I cut it in half and I put these serrations on here I just put it on a bandsaw and just chewed it up a little bit and I'm going to epoxy it into this area in front right there. Something like that. So I got slots on here so I can adjust the, the pulleys. Well, I'm not going to use these pulleys. I'm going to use, I got bearings. I'm going to put bearings in there. Roller bearings. I mean, before I had this just a piece of Delrin with a hole in it so it rotate but now that you know I'm trying to upgrade it a little bit we're going to put bearings in there and that way they can move in and out it also slide this way back and forth so it give me quite a bit of adjustment and uh, I had this I made that one piece and then I had the slot had to put it on a bandsaw and I cut it because this bottom piece is going to be epoxy to this plastic piece and each one of these is a half so I, when I separate it this piece has to have a cut in it for it to separate along with this piece because it's going to be glued or epoxy to that piece and that's what the uh, serrations are for is to help it glue onto that piece so when I put that piece on there that'll give me a lot of adjustment up on the front end and it'll also I can put bearings up there like that so that's a another improvement then this piece back here I had a bushing in there and I ordered a, uh, way back, I ordered a needle bearing for there, but I'd never put it in. And, uh, you know, I was, I was sitting here and I'm, I'm 
rotating this little shaft that goes in there and uh, you can feel a lot of resistance I was surprised at uh, how much resistance that little bushing I mean when it's sitting straight up there's like no resistance at all but when you put a little forward motion on it as the tension as the tension of the belt as it rotates it's, it pushes a little forward motion on there and there's a little resistance on there so I got to try to find my my needle bearing I know it's here somewhere I just don't know where and I'm going to go ahead and install that needle bearing in there So that's a, uh, I mean, it's minor stuff, but it's, uh, I'm taking away these uh, stationary rollers and I'm putting uh, ball bearings in there to uh, help the pulley system work a lot easier. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, it didn't take long to take this apart. I mean, it comes apart fairly easy. The hardest part is just taking it out of the frame. Once you get it out of the frame, everything just comes apart. And this is the, uh, the belt system. This hair piece fits in there. That's got that adjustment on it, but the uh, the pulley that goes here, this is the shaft that goes in the motor, and then this piece went into a, uh, this fits in there, in the earlier videos you might have seen it, but this attaches to the motor, which is over here, and then that fits through there and before I had this piece going into this brass bushing well, it was actually this brass bushing but you can't see it but these are all these are all the same size they were brass bushings and when I took it apart I noticed that the uh, you know I put a little oil on there but I noticed a, a little galling effect there because uh i don't know if the oil dried up or you know there's no there's no way of lubing that really so i decided to put a ball bearing in there too so i undercut that so the ball bearing is going to fit in there it's going to fit on here i had to turn this down i got a i think it was a 344 inner diameter on this brass. I don't remember the exact size of it, but the bearings I ordered were um, eight millimeter ID, which is about uh, 312. Well, actually, it's 314.9, something like that. But but you know, I I really wanted a a spherical bearing but they're a little hard to come by because I don't know about the alignment on here I have no dowel pins you know nothing to really line it up to and you know if this is off a little bit I didn't want that to start binding so I what I did here was so I had to do a little, little operation on here. So this is the, this is the, this piece here. Then the shaft comes out. Then the bearing rides on here. So what I did was I turned this to the diameter, three fifteen. And then I put just a slight cut on there 
and I put a slight cut on the back of it. I mean, it's not even that much. I mean, it's, it's barely, it's almost a thousand, thousands deep in the back. So what I'm trying to achieve here is I'm, I'm trying to, instead of getting a spherical bearing, I'm putting the spherical on the shaft itself. You see that red, that red mark there? That's where I put a little magic marker on it. And I came up with my tool and I took a cut on the, the back side and I took a cut on the front side. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to achieve a little crown on it. A little, little crown so that the bearing will ride in this area. The bearing being here, this being the high spot. Something like that. That's, a, that's greatly exaggerated, but. So that it, it will hold it steady, but it'll allow this to have a little pivot to it so that it only contacts basically on a ball. If you think of this as a ball, it's contacting on the high end of the ball and not so much on the on the shaft itself but on a very small area of that so that way if there's any misalignment it's still going to hold it but it'll still allow a little degree of freedom in there for this to the pivot of I mean this is greatly exaggerated but I mean it, it, it's probably there's nothing I have no uh, like I said I have no uh, dowel pins or anything to hold this in place and but that, uh, that should work out pretty good. That's going to go on like that. The only thing I got holding this right now is a screw there and a screw there. And that's what holds this together. You know, this wasn't uh, the original design. This was one piece. Then I decided to break it into two pieces and I didn't put any uh, kind of locating fixture on here to locate this piece against that piece. But nevertheless, it, it works. Yeah, there isn't much to the inner, inner core of this. And, uh, I think that's about all I'm going to do to it and then put it back together. Well, we'll see what happens. If something comes up, I'll let you know. Okay, bye.